and the topic is called financial instruments a very likely question on this in single company financial statement adjustment a very likely just like is 16 compulsory is 12 and ifrs you will find in each single company financial statement usually examiner asks these three so what do you have to do you have to focus on these three crucial accounting standards okay let's talk about what is financial instrument how to account for these financial instruments and related adjustments in the financial market usually there are two sides one is the investor side where an investor is putting his money and other is the company side where the company is trying to raise finance now suppose a company wants to issue new ordinary shares okay a company wants to issue new ordinary shares so from the company's point of view this is basically a fund raising activity okay and from the investor's point of view investor will invest in these shares so what is exactly a financial instrument is a financial instrument is basically the contract between these two parties okay so investor when acquire shares of a company there is a contract between investor and the other party okay one party this is the principal okay and sometimes a party is selling asset okay or a party is buying an asset from the stock exchange okay in this way uh, there is a transaction as well so the definition of financial instrument say that a financial instrument is a contract between two parties that give rise to what financial asset for one entity one party financial asset for one entity or one party which party for investor there is a financial asset and for the other party on the issuing side financial liability or equity instrument so from the issuer's point of view we have to see whether this issuing certificate the security is a liability or a equity instrument but from the investor side the investor is always going to record the financial asset so let me repeat a finance instrument is a contract that give rise to financial asset for one party and financial liability or equity instrument for the another party okay so let's see one example for example abc issued 10000 ordinary shares so this is basically a financing activity by abc limited so whoever will be the investor who will purchase this the investor will record this as a financial asset and the company is going to issue this the company will record this as equity instrument an investor will record this as a financial asset why it's an equity for the company because we know that the shares are considered as equity the ordinary shares are considered as equity so my question is what about the preference shares will that be equity or liability that we have to discuss in this accounting standard so whenever an entity issues ordinary shares the entity has to book the equity 
and the investor will recognize the financial asset. Similarly, for example, ABC issued loan note worth 1 million. Now, in this transaction, there is if redeemable debt, if redeemable are debt, if irredeemable, consider as equity. Am I right, sir? Yes, to some extent, you are right. Because whenever we have to think about a preference shares, we have to see that uh, what is the uh, relevant substance of the transaction. So if there is any element of debt in the redeemable, in the preference shares, will recognize those as a liability. I will discuss it later on. Now this transaction, in this transaction, the company is issuing a loan certificate. Okay. An investor is again buying a loan investment, loan certificate. So from investors point of view, nothing different. This is a financial asset, but now from the company's perspective, this is a financial liability. So in this way, you can distinguish that when you issue shares, we record it as an equity. But if you issue loan note, we record as a liability. The investor side is always the same. OK, so in the financial instrument topic, we'll study, we'll recognize how to account for financial asset how to account for financial liability and equity instruments, okay? So, first of all, what is financial assets? What is financial liability? What is equity instrument? These three definitions you have to understand. Okay. The equity instrument. So now what is financial asset? Basically a financial asset is an investment, but sometimes there might be some other definitions as well. So as per standard, what is the financial asset? So a financial asset is any asset that is one cash cash is always considered as a financial asset two investment in equity of another entity what it means it means if someone purchasing shares of another entity for the purchasing side, this will become the financial asset. Another definition, contractual right to receive cash. So you have purchased anything against that you get the contractual right to receive cash. For example, I have purchased loan note of an, ent an entity and I have the contractual right to receive interest every year. If in the contract, you have a contractual right to receive anything that for you, this is a financial asset and the opposite party that becomes a financial liability, right? So this is the simple definition of financial asset. Cash is a financial asset, any kind of investment in equity shares, and contractual right to receive cash flows. Now, as far as the financial liability is concerned, contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset. So when you have entered into a contract and as a result of entering into the contract, you have to pay, you have to deliver cash or another financial asset to another entity. 
that creates a financial liability. For example, what might be the case here? ABC issued a loan note. Now, if someone issues a loan note, is there any contractual obligation to deliver cash? Yes, you have to pay interest. And this is your contractual obligation to deliver cash. So in any transaction from the issuer side, if there is any contractual obligation, there is a financial liability. But what about the issuance of ordinary shares? When an entity issue ordinary shares, there is no obligation against dividend. There is no obligation against repayment of that shares. So as a result, the ordinary shares do not have this kind of definition. That is the contractual obligation to deliver cash. And so we will not recognize issuance of ordinary shares as a financial liability rather than equity instrument. So whenever you find this contractual obligation to deliver cash, the issuer will always recognize the liability. Now, what about the redeemable preference shares? If an entity issues redeemable preference shares, we have to check whether there is a contractual obligation. Even if there is a interest-free bond, there is a liability that you have to repay on redemption. So if there is a liability element, any kind of obligation to deliver something, in, even if there is no interest, but it will be a financial liability. So what about the redeemable preference shares? We know that on a redeemable preference shares, the dividend is not the obligation, but redemption is an obligation. You have to deliver cash on redemption. So it means there is an obligation to deliver cash. So redeemable preference shares is to be shown as a financial liability rather than equity. So you have to check each item if it's a financial instrument. Consider that whether it's an investment, every investment is a financial asset or from the issuer's point of view, it might be a liability or if not, then it will be a equity instrument. So what is the definition of equity instrument then? Equity instrument is called the residual interest in the assets after deducting all the liabilities. And this is the simple accounting equation that equity is the assets minus liability. And the ordinary shareholder always get what? The residual interest. At the end, everything belongs to ordinary shareholder. And that is the residual after paying all the liabilities from the business. If anything left over, that residue is called ordinary shares holders share. So is that definition clear? The financial instrument, the financial asset, the financial liability, and the equity instrument. These are the definitions. We haven't started the accounting treatment, but first of all, the definition would be clear that whenever I, I'll talk about the investment side, it will be a financial asset from the issuer side. Sometime it might be liability. Sometime it might be an equity instrument. Okay. Now let's first focus on how to deal with financial asset, how to account for financial asset, how to deal with financial asset. Now, by definition, a financial asset, we already discussed that it might be a cash. Financial asset is a cash. It might be investment in shares. It might be 
other than that okay that is a contractual right to receive cash flows so from this this perspective uh, we have to see whether our investment is in ordinary shares or in loan stocks so we'll work accordingly that what to do so let's focus on this so let me classify my investment into two parts one is investment in shares and other is investment in loan stocks okay there are two types of thing investment in shares the focus of examiner in fr is on investment in shares and other is investment in loan stock investment in equity okay and investment in loan stock now we have to talk about the initial measurement of financial asset as well as the subsequent measurement of financial asset now suppose i have acquired shares in another entity what is the purpose of buying that shares suppose i have acquired 10000 shares of suppose facebook why i have acquired shares what is the reason do you know why people acquire shares their intention vary from person to person okay on shares there is no interest right on shares there is only dividend return on investment obviously return on investment but the purpose might be that you want to trade purpose might be you want to trade you are a day trader for example another purpose you want to hold it for long term purpose as a long term investor so when you buy ordinary shares you have to identify for what purpose you have acquired these shares and accordingly there are two classification in this category financial asset there are two categories in investment in shares we have subsequently two categories so shares can be classified into these two categories very important so any kind of equity instruments we have to identify two categories first okay one is named as fptpl other is fpt oci so whatever is the investment it might be either fptpl or fpt oci now what is fptpl it's fair value through profit and loss one of the category another is fair value through other comprehensive income now how i would identify whether my investment falls in fptpl category or the fpt oci category so i have to i should know how we can classify as fptpl okay so normally my this category fptpl category is if my investment to hold shares purchase of share is for held for trading if i have purchased shares for trading purpose it's normally falls under fair value through profit and loss category and if the purpose is not for trading 
if the purpose is not for trading it's typically a fpt oci category but at initial initially what we can do we can also designate this investment at fpt oci okay if the intention is to hold that investment for long term purpose now what is the difference between these two categories if my investment in shares falls in this fptpl what is the accounting treatment if it falls in fpt oci what is the accounting treatment so let's discuss first what is fptpl fair value through profit and loss suppose i have purchased shares and my shares category is fpt pl suppose i have purchased 10000 shares so after classification my first task is initial measurement first time recording an initial measurement is at fair value and what is fair value at initial measurement price paid to acquire shares so suppose i have purchased 10000 shares okay and price paid is dollar 2 per share so how much is the investment cost the fair value is 20000 dollar okay obviously you have to memorize because uh, in mcqs or uh, like in any the examiner might ask about this so each category initial measurement subsequent measurement each and everything you should know but the focus should be on journal entries the focus should be on the impact on pnl and balance sheet especially the single company financial statement so what i will do i will record this like for example i have purchased 10000 shares at a price of 2 so my investment is 20000 so i will debit my financial asset debit by 20000 okay financial asset is debit by 20000 and cash or bank is credited by 20 so this is my initial recognition this is my initial recognition okay one issue is that whenever you want to purchase shares you have to pay transaction cost what to do with transaction cost so in this category if you have paid transaction cost in order to acquire those assets transaction cost is to be charged in profit and loss account as an expense remember transaction cost is to be charged in profit and loss account as an expense now suppose that we paid transaction cost from above shares transaction cost of suppose 100 dollar so what would be the journal for that the journal is profit and loss account debit as an expense 100 dollar and bank credit as 100 dollar this is the initial measurement of which category fair value through profit and loss this ifrs 9 is one of the most complicated accounting standard standard considered in financial reporting but again at fr level you will not get difficult question on that the questions are usually very simple the repetitive question in single company financial statement so try to get the concept but in sbr this ifrs 9 this deferred tax each and every accounting standards are in detail so when you study sbr you should know these fr standards knowledge 
So in FR, try to learn in such a way that it will help you in SBR exam. Okay. So let me repeat, there are two categories of financial asset. One is investment in ordinary equity shares, investment in loan stocks, investment in shares. There are two categories. One is FETPL, other is FETOCI, fair value through profit and loss or fair value through other comprehensive income. If we opt for fair value through profit and loss, initially we will record at fair value. And if there is any transaction cost, we have to recognize that in profit and loss account rather than adding in the cost of investment. Now, after initial recognition, there might be increase or decrease in share price. So each year you have to do subsequent measurement. In this category, So at reporting date, how, at what value we have to record our investment. So investment is to be revalued at each year end to be measured at fair value. And now that fair value is market price. Now this fair value is market price. So there might be any gain or loss, for example. So any gain or loss as a result of change in share price is to be recognized in profit and investment. This is very simple. If there is an increase in share price, record in profit and loss account as a gain. If there is a decrease in share price, record it as a loss. So for example, in the above example, I've acquired 10,000 shares at a rate of two per share. Now at the end, the share price move to 2.50. So how much is the gain? 10,000 shares now worth 2.50. That is 25,000. This is the fair value. This is the closing value of my investment. I have already recorded my investment at 20,000. So now the value is 25,000. So there is a gain 25,000 minus the broad forward figure. So there is a gain of 5,000. And what is the journal on that? The journal is asset debit. 5,000 and profit and loss account by the name of gain on investment is credit. And as a result of a loss, the profit and loss account debit and asset is credit. So this is the simple FETPL criteria. Okay. Now, what is the difference in What is the difference in FPT OCI? So let's see if I have purchased an investment and that is classified as fair value through OCI. Then how it is different? So initial measurement, same. The criteria is same at fair value. And what is fair value? That is the price paid. Now, one is difference is whatever is the transaction cost on these shares, these transaction costs are capitalized. And instead of recognizing as an expense, you will capitalize in the cost of investment. Like we recognize transaction cost in IS 16 in the cost of the asset. So for example, 
I purchase ten thousand shares acquired at a price of dollar five each. Transaction cost is two hundred dollar. The treatment is different because the intention is different. One, why you have acquired these shares? The intention is is to get get a profit immediately because the intention is for trading. That's why gain is to be recognized in profit and loss account and transaction cost is to be charged in profit and loss account. But if the nature is for long term investment, then we will capitalize transaction cost. So due to intention, the accounting treatment is different. Now, what is my journal? The asset cost is my investment is ten thousand shares multiply by five. It's fifty thousand, and my transaction cost. Now I have to capitalize this transaction cost, which is two hundred. So my total value is now five zero two zero. And instead of charging this transaction cost as an expense. i will add it in the cost of investment so as a result my asset in the sfp is 5020200 and bank credit by 50200 this is the initial journal okay now subsequent measurement will there be any change subsequent measurement at each reporting date investment is revalued and is measured at how what value fair value the criteria is consistent fetpl same at fair value what is fair value here now fair value is the market price now what is this in that any gain or loss any change in fair value any gain or loss remember all the gain all the loss on ft oci is to be recognized in other comprehensive income gain in oci as well as loss in oci so it will create sometime a positive reserve and sometime it will create a negative reserve So, for example, the share price above, which was five, and it might be decrease. Yes, it is same as revaluation surplus under I S sixteen, but there is a there is a difference in revaluation surplus. If there is a surplus, we recognize in O C I, and if there is a deficit, we recognize it in profit and loss account. But here, the criteria is that any gain. any loss is to be recognized in other comprehensive income so there is no profit and loss treatment okay so suppose now share price is 5.30 so how many shares i have 10000 shares what is the value now it is Fifty-three thousand. So this is the closing balance of the investment. What was the opening balance? It's five zero two double zero. So brought forward is five zero two double zero, and carried forward is fifty-three thousand. So the resulting is gain, and it is unrealized gain, twenty eight hundred, and investment debit or asset debit by twenty eight hundred. But instead of profit, I have to credit it in OCI. So, did you get the concept? Did you did you understand the concept? What is the difference between these two categories of shares? FPTPL, the complete treatment, and FPT OCI, the complete treatment. Okay. Now, if you have disposed of these two investment. so what would be the effect on disposal of shares 
so any any disposal whether it's oei category or pnl category any gain or loss on disposal where we have to recognize is to be recognized in profit and loss remember every time in every standard the treatment is same any gain or loss on disposal is to be recognized in profit and loss account but if that was a fpt oci after disposal or at the time of disposal whatever we have in reserve what to do with that because we have something in reserve we have accumulated gain on reserve what to do for that like revaluation surplus so we have a choice we can transfer it to retained earning or we can left this in equity either we can transfer this in retained earning it's a choice what do you want to do better is to transfer it to retained earning so that will get a realized gain so if fe oci investment is sold the investment reserve can be transferred into retained earning or left in equity so if i try to convert it in retained earning then reserve debit whatever name is that reserve debit and retained earning this is the complete treatment of the investment side any question okay so today's session we have discussed that uh, uh, the the accounting standard number 12 some uh, tricky calculation of uh, the revaluation surplus in the defer tax very important for the exam try to practice as much as you can and we have started financial instrument one of the most important one so you have to be careful in financial instrument too now after this uh, financial asset category the next category is how to deal with financial uh, how to deal with the investment and loan loan stock and normally in uh, in the debt situation there are more options as compared to the shares category but all of the options are not examinable in in this particular we will we will discuss the treatment and uh, and then discuss so let's have some practice few practice and then we will move to the debt instrument the investment in debt instrument Now suppose this is a question. A company invested in ten thousand shares of a listed company in November two thousand and seven at a cost of four point two zero. At December, the shares have a market value of four point nine. Prepare relevant extract to be shown in profit and loss account and statement of financial position. So, I have to. mention that what kind of intention is that so let's assume that uh, it is uh, oci category okay okay let's assume that is a pnl category let's assume that uh, this is held for trading so what is the initial value the initial value is 10000 shares at the rate of 4.20 and that is my initial value is 40 42000 and what is the uh, the subsequent value the subsequent one is same 10000 shares at the rate of 4.9 so a gain of 0.70 so as a result this is a gain of 7000 and to be reported in profit and loss account now what is the balance sheet 
extract the balance sheet value will be shown in the statement of financial position this is the sfp value and this is the gain value 7000 to be shown in profit and loss account right now another example a company invested in 20000 shares of a listed company in october at a cost of 3.80 the market price is now 3.40 the company is not planning on selling these shares in the short term and elect to hold them as fet other comprehensive income now in this case what is my initial value my initial value is 20000 ordinary shares at the rate of 3.80 how much is the value and the subsequent one is now 20000 3.40 so there is a loss of how much is the loss it's 76000 it's 68000 So there is a loss of eight thousand. There is a loss. What is the category? So the extract shows that we have to show this loss as a negative value in other comprehensive income loss on investment, and that would be a minus figure that is eight thousand. and in sfp the value would be the sfp that is the investment value and investment value would be 68000 in sfp okay so this is the complete uh, treatment of the investment in shares